So we move along to the first NPC turn. So I think it is fair that this that the big fish uh it's his turn and you've given him you've given him distinct advantage here kin uh but the secondary problem is he also doesn't care about you <laughs> uh so we we have to we have to pray and oh, hope, hope that so. you don't get we have to pray and hope that you don't get caught in the crossfire here uh he may be your friend kind of uh just in the sense that he's trying to eat this thing but we'll see how far that actually takes him um so I think that his claws are going to... Oh, right, right. I actually f had forgotten something. Um, his, uh, he was technically, quote unquote, knocked down because of the claws from, uh, from the big guy. But, regardless. Um, the big guy is going to make another uh, claw attack on him. It's an average check because it's melee versus melee. Uh, I'm going to give him an upgrade, however, because Kin so lovingly uh, gave him a, a good target. Uh, but I'm going to flip a dark side because there is a potential for stuff to go wrong. And this is against him, right? I'm flipping a dark side against this creature uh, because there is the there is the potential on perhaps something akin to a despair that Kin might get smashed instead. Uh, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, on this roll. Oh, snap. Hey. Yeah, this is really this is really good for him. So, uh the gigantic dragon snake. He rips and fucks him up. Uh yeah, he rips and tears That's into this creature. Roll. Uh 10 was at 14 damage and I get and I get to crit and I get a triumph. Uh, so since we've already started working on the crits, let's just see where this takes us. I think. I think let's just chain. Yeah, I think let's just let's just let's just crit chain this this up, and we'll see what happens. Uh, so first, okay, can't perform an action next turn. That's oh, good. I, oh, that's great. That's really. Oh wait, it, wait. It doesn't mean it skips its turn though. It can still no, maneuver. but it can't do an action. Which yeah, is it huge. it could do a maneuver, but it can't do an action, which is. Huge. Wait, is yes. it still knocked that? Is it still knocked down? Um, technically, yes. I guess. So uh, and what does knock down? Does that mean it can't do? He would. He would have to spend a maneuver to not be knocked down anymore. Essentially. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then uh, I think the extra critical here is acceptable. Uh, horrific injury. Okay. So let's roll a d10 here. Are you using the triumph to crit and the and the double advantage to crit? Yeah, absolutely. We're just gonna uh, change it up. I know you oh. can do that. That's cool. So uh, that's agility. Oh, agility. Agility. Okay. Hoping so brawn. one wounded characteristic. It was it was very close to brawn. It was very close to brawn. That would have been a good one. Yeah. Um, let us wound his agility, uh, which was already pretty high. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was. His coordination is slightly worse now, though, Ken. You might be, you might match him for coordination. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think the the roiling water underneath you, Ken, like splashes up, and you have to like grip onto the boat a little bit to stay stay standing. Uh, but essentially, this creature just like rips off its tail, right, um, with its massive claws. Uh, I still haven't even applied the damage to that as well. Um, Yeah, and this creature looks severely injured at this point. Uh, it's making like these awful hissing and uh, and um, just like painful sounds coming out of its mouth uh, as it's being devoured from below. It's its turn, but it has to take maneuver to get up, and and then also can't take an action. So it is literally just stuck doing nothing this whole turn. Which brings us to PCs. So the last two PCs are Dash and Mouse. Um, Dash, you uh, Dash, you want to do something, Mouse? You want to do something? Uh, I'm just getting to the back of the boat. Yeah. So if if you want to okay. spend if you want to spend a, you, it would take two maneuvers, I would say, to get to the back of the boat uh, to get into the engine compartment. Now I I will remind you, or I will not remind you because you didn't know. Uh, I will inform you that the reason the ship slowed down is because of the drag on the on like the ship. Uh, no, you didn't want to like shear the skip off. 
Um, I have uh, I have another plan. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Um, but yeah, if you want to spend two maneuvers to get back there, if you want to spend two strain, then you can maintain your action too. Um, no, I'll just. Okay. Um, it's fine. All right. So we see Mouse's mad dash. Uh, like, you know, doing that thing, I don't know if any of you have ever been on a boat, but, like, when you go downstairs on a boat, you, you naturally, like, grab on to the, uh, like, whatever's above you and just swing places. Uh, I think we see Mouse, like, doing essentially this parkour through the, the bowels of the ship to get back to the engine compartment. Um, you got pretty good coordination, I can do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you, you've been on the ship long enough to know all the ins and outs of it at this point. Um, so, fantastic. Mouse it's mouse core, yeah, there you go. Parkour through engine rooms. All, it's, why is it always the engine room? Always. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I guess then, with that, if you're spending your action to maneuver there, uh, we move on to the last PC turn, which is you, Dash. Now, Dash, I think maybe you kind of saw Jax's plan with this, um, but you also have not taken I, a fear check yet. I, I don't think I've actually gone outside yet. No, so you're, you're outside. You came out with Zian. Oh. Uh, but right. you you Diane. didn't actually you didn't actually roll your fear check yet. I do remember that. True. Um, so let me let me just see if you are afraid here. Let me make sure I got the right roll here. Uh, it is right. Okay, it is a hard check, but it is upgraded by two. So if you would like to roll um, your discipline, please. Oof. Okay, right. so take a strain, uh, and you are afraid in this scenario, which means that uh, because it's just one threat, basically it just adds one black dice to everything that you do. Welcome to the broken hearted. Yes. Find that broken heart right now. There it is. Boom. Um, so it's going to add one black dice. In addition, obviously, because the ship is still boiling over, that's another couple of black dice. The environment here is really playing against you. Uh, I would like to use my heavy velocity to shoot it. Yeah, you want to you want to do the same thing that Jax did. And, uh, you want to do the, the same thing that Jax did and try and shoot the mandible off. Yes. All right. So it's short range, but I'm I'm upgrading the difficulty because of like the called shot aspect. Uh, okay. I'm adding three black dice though because you're afraid. Uh, so you're kind of just like shooting wildly. Um, and the roiling toiling of the ship. Um, and why not? I'm going to spend a black. I'm going to spend a destiny point as well. Because I'm a cruel mistress today. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Alright, we will add an upgrade on your side. And whenever you're ready to make that, that roll, for it. Yeah! Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so uh triumph. yeah well. so so here's the thing you can reduce that one strain that you took uh also you don't have your damage or critical numbers in there you should put that in there um I, oh shit it's okay uh so but you do get a triumph so so you don't you don't it's hit seven right? and three you don't shoot the um uh you don't shoot the mandible that you were aiming at but perhaps something else good happens here do you have any ideas of what that might be um I don't know, fucking the, the shot ricochets in a way while I'm trying to not look at it in a way that kind of, like, distracts it? Um, um, I don't know. Yeah, so, like, perhaps some options here are um, doing something else super beneficial. Uh, uh, I have an idea. Yeah, what's up? You're open to suggestions. Because uh, I was open? considering what would happen if I failed uh, the same thing. Um... Why not have the shot like you miss the mandible, but it like hits it in the mouth and like f messes up some of its teeth, so it weakens its connection to the ship with its mouth. I'm okay with that. Yeah, so uh, I th I think uh, that I think that maybe the option here is because you were taking the aim shot. Uh, your triumph will allow you not to hit what you were aiming at, but to hit it instead. Does that sound okay. Does that sound reasonable? Uh, it just All means right. like the the position of the mandible is not going to be weakened in any way. Um, okay. but it's seven three is the is the range there so seven, uh, yeah it's seven damage three for critical so you do you do pierce it by just barely um Oof. it has pretty high soak 
uh, in general. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, you you miss it, and then like you hit it in the mouth, like you see the the scorching water as you hit it in the mouth. Um, and you think you've done some damage to it, but it's also hard to tell because it's so crazy and rocking, and the ship's going down basically. I think. Cool. Um. Would you like to take any maneuvers, Dash? Uh, hi. It would cost him strain, wouldn't it? Uh, not for his first one, because he didn't. He, uh, he took didn't out aim. his gun. Oh, true. Good, good call. It would cost you strain to use him another maneuver. That's a that's a good that's a good call. Uh, uh, no, I'm staying in place. Okay. All right. Uh, so it's a new round again. So any PC can go at this point. Um, would you? To to evaluate the scenario, uh, there is still one of these hook like mandibles that's stuck in the in the skiff. Um, the creature that is attached to that though is injured; uh, it's being torn up, torn apart from below. Uh, Kin is down, having successfully ripped one off. I assume that maybe the intent is to try and get the other one off as well. Um, Mouse is in the engine room with her plans, whatever they may be. <laughs> Would you consider the fish that has been knocked down just been, like gone up to have acted this encounter? Uh, no, I don't think it's actually been able to do anything. It's, All right, it cool. specifically well, then... has not been able to use an action, so I would say. All no. right. Well, then I'm gonna be able to do all my things again. Yeah. So I'm gonna, as an incidental, is there a cleat near me? Yeah, sure. So as an inc- incidental, I'm not gonna tie off my line that kin is attached to okay but i'm gonna like you know the figure eight cleats i'm gonna kind of do like the first thing of a figure eight so if i end up having to try and pull kin up i want to get like a boost dice or something like that okay uh i think i think i'd make you spend a maneuver on that wouldn't be an action Uh, but i think i'd make you spend a maneuver on it if you wanted to do that all right i'll I'll spend a maneuver doing that okay all right um i'm also gonna suffer two two strain to do another maneuver so i can aim okay sure and I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna shoot, try and shoot the same thing I was trying to hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, I you, hit last time. So do you, you get uh you get more blue dice? You get three total blue dice, correct? I'm, I'll have three again, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, so uh, I mean, just because okay, there's still the potential for bad things to happen. I'm gonna keep doing it till there's yeah, not a potential for bad things to happen. So will I. So All right, so upgrade on your side, upgrade on my side. It's an average check, but it's got the three black dice. And three blue dice. Roll it whenever you're ready. Hey! Nice. Shall I take that string? Yeah, take that string. (laughs) Uh, You deal 11 damage to it, and you have a triumph. What do you want to spend that triumph on? I want to blow that fucking arm right yeah, off. Yeah, you just want to blow it off, right? <laughs> Not Abs- the, no, actually, I, the way I the way I see it, there's like the mandible, like it's got a claw and then like an arm thing. Yeah. And I've been sh- and I had shot, I hit the same spot on the arm that I hit last time, and I just like blow. So like he still he has like a stump. Yeah. So there's there's a joint right here, right? You see yeah, the joint yeah, on exactly. the on the image. Yeah. Yeah. So I you shoot that, me. and then you take aim again, and you steady yourself, and you shoot it again. And I think that that's exactly what happens with your triumph. I think that his arm uh, kind of rips off, and Kin, he begins to be getting dragged under the water. Um, he's not quite under it, because he's still like trying to scramble and, and do something about it, but he's slowly being drug under. Um, the, the ship tosses a little bit less, because he's not actually attached. So everybody, I think, gets uh, only one black dice from that now. I also just realized no one has used the, adba- the blue dice that Kin gave to someone correct so ken should use it himself may i have it back <laughs> yeah sure that sounds totally fine ken um so that's it for your turn so we have another pc turn next uh the creature's being drugged down into the depths but is still a problem for this round i would say before it completely gets engulfed so uh the pontoon is still attached right yeah mm-hmm it had it has not been ripped off. Although there yeah. is there is definite signs of like damage to it now. Um, I want to try and get on to the pontoon proper. Okay. To disengage it and stand up. Yeah, That's I mean, the... I, yeah, I think that a, just a simple maneuver would allow you to do that for sure. Yeah, because it's not attached anymore. Uh, really. Uh, yeah, it's or, it's, it's or kind of like shove it off for. 
Right, it's flailing around. It's being drugged down. It's like it's probably trying to like grip on and get up or, or do something, but it's not physically attached anymore. Beyond its weight. So I'm gonna try and stand up on the pontoon and then um, jump back to the ship. Okay. Do you want to like or go take climb. the ladder, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll probably um, be safe for. <laughs> yeah. Thank also, you. also, I'll remind you. There's still like this big hunk of whatever the fish was chasing. That's ah. attached to the uh, to the boat, right? And that was okay, the whole yeah. reason why you stopped anyway. Yeah. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna get up on the pontoon and try to dislodge that. Yeah. That's that sounds not not to tell you what to do with your turn, but it is. Yeah. If you want to move at any pace, <laughs> you're yeah. gonna need to get that off. Um. So I think for that, it's just an average check. Um. And I'm gonna add the one black dice. Uh, or two black dice, right, sorry, because one is for, the ship is still rocking back and forth, uh, but also I think in this scenario, you're still afraid technically, whatever fear okay. means to a droid. Yeah. Uh, Alright. So, whenever you're ready. That's athletics? Yes. Definitely All right. say so. You're the athletics master today, it appears. Maybe yeah. both of you are like high alert or something. And I got the boost die as well? Uh, oh, good call. Let me add that for you. Boom, there you go. You got a boost dice. Hey, yeah, cool. So yeah, take some strain. I think that like the water splashing up onto you is like getting in some of your joints and sockets and they're like, they're kind of seizing up a little bit. Um, yeah. so, so take a couple strain. Uh, but oh, with it's that- It's really jammed fast and so I'm just straining all my servos as well. Yeah, Never exactly. Uh, Cause it is, you impaled it doing like, you know, a hundred or whatever. Um, yeah. And yeah, so you, you get up there and you realize that uh, it's actually like a large, fish it kind of looks like a big old carp or have you ever seen those sunfish uh like the big old useless fish the mola molas um <laughs> the big old useless fish they are they're useless they have no need to exist ever um fish. yeah it's like impaled upon the upon the the skiff but the boat rocking i think also has like dislodged it a little bit so essentially can you just like kind of like crawl down there and then you like put your feet against it and just like shove it off and you see it kind of yeah. like if you've ever tossed like a like um anything flat into the water you know how it kind of is the side to side and then flips and then side to side and then flips you see it begin to sink down into the depths um perhaps to be eaten by something else uh is there anything else you'd like to do kid um just uh we got a motion to move forward my arm just uh pointing forward yeah yeah so you like yeah cool okay <laughs> Um, so it brings us to uh, yet another PC turn. Would it be possible to throw the mandible that's still attached at the fish? <laughs> Absolutely. You could you could pull that thing out and move it. It's a shallow at one. You could pull it out and try and hit the fish with yeah, it. I sure. would like to super pacifist to to trying aim. to rip things out of it out of a creature, rip arms out of a creature, and then beat it. With. You basically turn into a force wookie. Correct. Correct. <laughs> That's actually uh, great, Force Wookie. I like that. So, I will do the uh, hurl attack. Um, mm -hmm. That's discipline with a difficulty equal to the silhouette of the object. Yeah. And I'm going to aim as well. Yep. Um, so, I'm also going to apply the black dice here because you are afraid. Yep. And um, the ship is still moving a little bit and it's throwing out for concentration a little bit. So, it's, yep. an, it's an easy check with the two black dice. Um, and uh, I'll add the I'll add the two force dice in there, so you can just make the discipline check if you wanted to. Okay. So you know what what type of force you would also have to use. So whenever you're ready. Hey. hey. So okay. uh, so for a shilla one, you don't have to tap into that dark side, right? Uh, no. Uh, okay. I do. Oh, you do. Um, oh, is that because it's the hurl? Uh, so. You have to make the the basic power. You spend one to. Oh, okay. You... To to upgrade the strength. Got it. Uh, you have to you have to succeed with the power and then also spend one to upgrade the basic strength up to. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you do you you you're still afraid, Zian. Oh, your yeah, your, no, your fear um, is controlling your your actions at this point. That is absolutely what's happening. Uh, Zian kind of hates this fish. Uh, his... <laughs> His conflict is, is going past ten. Uh, so that's one, two, fucking three. We'll put it at twelve. 
conflict so far. I just yeah, curl fair. it to do 10 damage to the fish. Yeah. Uh, and even after the soak, uh, so I'm actually, you know what I'm actually going to do since you're using its claw, let me see what, let me see what, uh, things its claw actually has. Uh, <laughs> oh, I want to take a bunch of strain. strain. Or yeah. Is there something else you want me to do with that? Uh... No, no, I was, I, um, um, don't take the strain. I don't want to do, okay. do don't take the strain. Moving kids uh, to safety. But that is, that is a lot of, yeah, three, three threat is the level at which I can make cool stuff happen. Uh, yeah. so, so yeah, don't, don't take the strain there. Um, so here's how, here's how it works. Uh, the mandibles actually have pierce and vicious. So I will, <laughs> I will, I will it apply will that to your attack. It to itself with its claws than yeah. any of us. I'll, I'll apply that to its attack. That seems totally fair. Uh, which pierce four actually is what it has. <laughs> um, and it has vicious two. Although you didn't get the advantage to like activate no. the critical on it. Uh, I think that, yeah, you, you, essentially, you hit it in the head with its, with its own spike. Uh, Quit hitting yourself. And, uh, yeah, it, it takes a significant amount of damage, actually. Um, because it's pretty strong. Yeah, and it is, it is on its last leg. It's not dead yet, it's not completely dead, but I think that, like, it looks it looks dazed and isn't like moving or fighting around as much after after being impaled. In fact, the claw is probably sticking like out of its out of like the skin around its head, right? Where you just like impaled it, used it like a, a, a scythe, <laughs> right, and just slammed it into the creature. Yeah. Um. Cool. Awesome. Uh. Anything else for you, Zian? Uh. No, because that was like my uh my move. Oh, I didn't put the boost in there but whatever uh oh you're not uh, i apologize here uh, that's, that's whatever um there you have two more advantage you can reduce two strain if you want okay um wouldn't that no, just no, no. Up, uh... yeah cancel out the bad thing yeah oh yeah there you go there you go okay so just but... take one strain then how's yeah. that okay <laughs> yeah. Since I'm stuck, I'm I, I, will, I will ca- <laughs> i will i will cancel out the bad thing all right. Uh, so uh, that's it for the end for now. Okay. Right, so NPC's turn. Uh, the dragon snake has been going first, and so he's going to continue to go first. Uh, and he is going to attempt to. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, he's just going to attempt a claw to death, yeah. and we'll see. We'll see what happens here. So it's it's average check. Um. And I'm going to upgrade it for free once. And I'm going to use a dark side point. Uh, because there is still the potential that Kim gets caught in the crossfire here. Um, and then it's going to attack this thing. Oh, let's see. No, totally fine. So, uh, the creature, it's... Um, slices into it, dealing 13, has pierced 3. Yeah, and I think that, um, Kin, what you witness is, uh, the, the cola claw. Um, it kind of thrashes and kind of falls off the boat, and, like, you see it, like, kind of, like, shuddering a little bit. Um, but you recognize, Kin, that it is in its death throes. Uh, and the large fish... Uh, begins to descend upon it and like grips it with its claws and is kind of like pulling it towards its mouth um, and you can see it beginning to feed underneath the boat um, it is dead so it is PC's turn uh, mouse Jack shouts down grab me a claw <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so Mal- <laughs> mouse and dash again are, are the ones who still have to go now mouse was your plan to somehow kick the engines into high gear or something no I was gonna try to shock the like get the ship oh, okay. uh, surface shocked so that I could shock it off the ship. Oh, okay. Mm, clever. That would have been cool. Kin would not have appreciated that, but it would have been cool. <laughs> I, I know that some of the party members probably wouldn't have appreciated it. But, uh, um, if it gets a giant monster off the ship, then you know, you know, sometimes you have to consider. Sometimes you have to fry a friend's circuits in order to yeah. get it. correct. Yeah, sometimes you do. As long as you fix it afterwards. Uh, so maybe, maybe mouse, maybe we see like you initiating those procedures, and then you hear like cackle over the comms. 
you hear go drive it's off and yeah. you're just like you're like getting ready to push the button and you're like never mind <laughs> yeah, i just put my finger to my cheek and i'm just like no nah, okay yeah yeah exactly um so uh i've got good news and bad news the good news is uh we're no longer in a combat round can you begin ascending uh the the captain who's awake by this point obviously uh he begins powering up the boat and it begins to kind of go off um slowly at first uh but then picks up speed uh not up to its max speed though um because i think that like at at this juncture you're just trying to get out of the immediate vicinity um just so you can uh you can perhaps get away uh but the problem is you still don't know really the extent of the damage to the ship and you don't want to just like go driving away and then have the pontoon rip off uh mid drive because that would be very dangerous i just thought of something um, awesome and what is that if we had kept the mandibles yang could have turned into yonder <laughs> from guardians of the galaxy <laughs> <laughs> oh That's true very true <laughs> so the group of you are also no longer afraid you've kind of you're you're you all probably you know head back down into maybe the the cafeteria area of the ship and uh you, you can remove your little heart symbols um and i think that as you do so like the captain comes over like the little cackling intercom right and he says hey that was quite the experience Thank you all. You've done your job admirably. I'd say we're far enough away now that we won't be bothered anymore. I'll be powering down so we can see what the damage is, although we should wait till night, perhaps. I say we all deserve, well, a round of drinks. We we're stopping in the middle of the ocean. I mean, yeah, where else are you going to stop? Essentially, you guys are, you, you would know that you are, if we're looking at the map, Probably right about. Uh, let me draw shape. You're probably like right about here. I mean, surely we wouldn't stop. We just slow to like a slow speed. Yeah, yeah. No, you're not like stop completely. Um, but you okay. can't. You can't go like. You can't go fast right now. Um, yeah. Fair and enough. the dudes worry about his ship. Uh, so you're not gonna just be dead in the water, but you'll be idling, like the, the equivalent to like idling where the engines are engaged and you're maneuvering but you know it's safe enough to go down and make sure that nothing's going to fall off or hasn't already fallen off the ship like you say well like maybe three knots maybe four knots sure sure yeah <laughs> around there um so uh he perhaps we're all in the like little uh mess hall area um and he comes down with his you know big big bushy white beard and he um Oh he yeah, says, Toasty. Our captain is basically Captain Birdseye. Okay. I was thinking, yeah. Uh, so he probably has a bottle of some liquor with him, um, and he begins like going up to each of you and like clapping you on the back and like telling you what a great job you did and you know uh, all of this, all this other stuff. And he seems like not put out at all by the whole experience, uh, which I'm sure is not the way that you all feel about it um so what what does that scene look like from everybody's perspective is it mostly just like a kind of a nervous quiet where you're all just like uh, yeah okay um like lost in your own thoughts uh jacks like holding his drink would turn to ken and be like i like you but you're fucking crazy <laughs> I'm uh, having just witnessed him jump down onto a pontoon where there's two big killer fish. Uh, Jax is wondering if Ken's logical boards are not good. <laughs> Fair, but um, he's also but yeah. he's also like very impressed. So Ken would respond. Uh, by the way, my robot voice. Why? So uh, Ken will respond. Um, you're the one who went down there first. <laughs> Yeah, but I was attached to you and could get myself up. You yes, were attached I was to me attached and to needed me to pull you up. There's a difference, my friend. You say the like, way, 300 the pound steel way. droid. <laughs> Jax um, will look uh, at his uh, at his arms and thank Kin for the kind compliment. 
Um, I guess Klaus is kind of like just freaked out and like having to stay in the stationary ship and during a whole night seems stupid to her. Well, yeah, so it was already kind of like the middle of the night going towards the morning. So it's really only like maybe an hour or so uh, before daybreak and you can actually inspect the ship and uh, and kind of you, you all were kind of woken up or either were on guard during this portion of the night. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah, the only we were all. Oh, no, uh, Dash and Zian were sleeping at the mm -hmm. time. Yeah, Dash and Zian were the ones that were asleep at the okay. time. By the same token, Mouse has never tried alcohol before so she's <laughs> oh my god yeah this is, this is the first time that she's like ever handled yeah. alcohol. do you like accept the drink yeah i think okay. so all right um, um and so like you smell it and it just burned your burned your nose hair like immediately yeah. um <laughs> this is this is this is grog man this <laughs> is this reactor coolant right yeah it's it's like you have smelled better things in the engine room than what is currently being offered to you to drink. Uh, Mouse is also the only one of us who didn't fail a fear check. Uh, well, Mouse never went out there because she's not stupid. Yeah, but still. So <laughs> she never actually, because like I think here's the deal, Mouse is you never actually really saw the things. Mm -hmm. You were like in the bridge and like you knew that something was attached to the ship, and then you heard everybody screaming and yelling. Yeah. And you were just like, okay, I have to do something and get something off the ship. So you never actually saw the, the creatures themselves. No. So I probably didn't need the fear check, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, lucky. yeah that's, that's essentially what I'm saying, is you didn't so need So I'm it. guessing the, the captain is telling all kinds of uh, fish stories. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, he's like, uh, he probably says, hi, that one wasn't even half the size of the one I encountered over in, you know, whatever planet that he was on. Uh, <laughs> Manon is probably what he says um, and and he's like alright that one luckily I was in a more heavily armored uh, vessel at the time a warboat someone might say we did battle with the creature for nigh on two weeks until we finally came out victorious uh, with a sight that you could see as we drug it to the surface he's hmm. Uh, are these real stories? <laughs> Do you you ask him that? Yeah. Yeah. He says, "Well, of course, lass. Of course, they're real stories. A captain, a, a captain would never lie about these things. They're like an insight sort of check. Insight check? Yeah, yeah. So like, it's it's essentially perception opposed to his deception, right? Like that's the yeah. I'm gonna uh, try a perception check. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Go ahead, and uh, if you want a perception check, I've got his his deception rank in there. Okay. Um, here it goes. You ready? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, so, like, uh, you don't know if he's telling the truth or not. Um, don't worry about that threat. I'm not going to give you strain for this. Um, you don't know if he's telling the truth or not, but you did, you did get a triumph. So, like, not related to whether or not he's telling the truth, something awesome that may happen here. Would, do you have any ideas? Like, um, Mouse loves the stories. Yeah, maybe they're, maybe they're actually, like, calming for you. Like, they're really intriguing, and, like, you, uh, you know, perhaps they're very engaging stories. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I, I don't I'm know just trying to think, like, what benefit you could get here. Uh, it's mostly just being, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to confer a benefit. Maybe maybe Mouse doesn't realize that he's embellishing, but he thinks Mouse knows that he's embellishing. Yeah. And that changes his Yeah, okay. Reaction. So So yeah, so maybe maybe like you you're you're not sure, but he he says uh you don't know if he's lying or not, but then he also says uh I but you know, all of us old dogs, us old sea captains, sometimes we like to make mountains out of molehills. Oh. Okay, well, I mean, um, that's cool. I guess. I don't know what to say, I'm sorry. No, yeah, it's totally fair. I think that, like, 
he kind of just nods and like probably slaps you on the back. I wasn't uh, doing it to accuse him or anything. I was just kind of like, eh. yeah, totally. Um. So what about everybody else during this whole procedure? Is everybody remaining silent? Zian, you you were perhaps like the most distressed during that. Yeah. So. Phase. Like as as uh, he's like handing out shot glasses or or whatever he's handing out and like clasping people on the back like hey good job Zian gets wicked drunk <laughs> no um what first of all what type of material would the the glasses be uh, so it's probably like an assortment of different mugs like have you ever been uh like if you ever go to like a work uh like if you if you work in an office space and like there's a bunch of other people there you know how like there's just like a collection of various different cups yeah. that just start to acquire that's kind yeah. of what this is, right? Like, one of them's, like, a big old coffee be... mug. There's probably, like, a bowl that's <laughs> been, like, a handle's been attached to it that somebody has. Like, yeah, it's just all... Be, uh, like, metal or something breakable? Uh, no, they're probably, like, uh, some of them are probably, like, ceramic. Um, right? And I, I would okay. assume most of them are probably ceramic. Okay. Uh, similar to what we would we would have today. Alright, so... Zian's gonna, plastic. like... Sl as, as he's, like... Clasping, clasping his shoulders like yeah good job boyo or something like that he's just gonna kind of brush his arm away take the take the the bottle of alcohol from him pour it drink it walk off in a huff with the with the the the, the mug like floating in air and sure. Zian's just gonna like walk out to the bow and the, the thing's gonna fall down to the floor okay yeah, so you, uh, so I think that, like, as you leave, he probably looks at, like, the rest of the group and he goes, Ha, well, I understand that it can be a little bit stressful seeing your first sea monster, but I did warn the boy. And then he carries on as if nothing happened. But all of you probably take note that, like, Zian was in a mood. Uh, yeah. Ken, Ken is actually in a really good mood. He, I think he's, um, uh, I don't think he and Jack, so maybe talking about the other crazy when, when they were on the oh. salvage ship, uh, how they jumped, uh, how they opened the airlock, um, you know, crazy things. Yeah, yeah. There's like out. a moment where they're like, "We tend to just do crazy shit together, huh?" Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's healthy, but it kind of works. Yeah. There was at one time you like. We're getting sucked out of an airlock and then grappled onto something and swung into a ship, yes. Yeah. yeah. Or the time we fought the crazy Rodian with the really good axe. Yeah. Correct. And we're telling the sea captain this and we're kind of, you know, taking his cue. Yeah, you're tra you're, tra you're bandying words about, perhaps. Yeah. Cool. cool. Um, I guess Mouse doesn't really care for alcohol, so I think she would like to um, follow Zan. Okay. Yeah, so um, you you head out there to the like bow of the ship as you're just kind of idling uh, forward. You know, you're still you're still in motion, um, just to kind of keep in motion. But uh, I think like just the the very first rays of the sun are starting to like peek up over the horizon. Um, I say sun, but of the star of the system, uh, and they're just starting to like peek up over the horizon, like the kind of like pinkish reddish hue that sometimes happens during sunrise uh, is apparent in all the cloud cover that that is overhead. Um, and Zian, do we see you just like standing, like gazing out into the yeah, horizon dramatically? Very brooding. Sure. <laughs> so, Mouse, what do you what do you say? Do you just like approach and remain silent? Um, I guess I, I'm. Uh, I guess I just approach silently. I'm not. I, Mouse isn't really too talkative. Yeah, you're just providing providing company to Zian, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Zian probably doesn't notice for a, for a long time. He's really really inside his own head for quite a while. Yeah, I don't I don't think I don't know. Sorry, I don't hard to talk. Yeah, so so is it, I I guess like Zian, when you do notice that Mouse is is there yeah. just kind of like silently keeping you company, do you say anything or like do you just acknowledge the fact and then continue your brooding? Uh, you probably, I probably turn to her and like, if you're looking like his eyes are probably bloodshot and like, 
really clearly stressed out, upset, and he's probably kind of like not in a not, and he's he's just kind of says like what, and not and not like a he's kind of snaps it, but not in a a really aggressive tone. I guess is kind of. Um, is there like a reason you're stressed out? It's just like yes, no, I don't know. These past couple days have been rough. I mean, it's been kind of rough for everybody. We've been through a lot. Yeah, but it's it's especially rough for someone like me. I mean, I don't know all of what you're going through, but... And I kind of, I'll kind of explain the basic idea of the light and the dark side and kind of how the Jedi teachings are to a very basic level. Yeah, and I think like the important thing is here, you would do you admit that you were like afraid, right? Like is yeah, that No, I'm I I Mouse has been very unassuming. She's been kind of like she Zian's like, yeah, I can talk to her. She's quiet. She's so yeah. he's he's kind of gonna. I'll kind of explain like the the Force vision, Lucia Janus, and how like he like Zian hates Lucia Janus right now. He's saved her life. He's done whatever he could to prevent her from coming to harm in that combat. Mm-hmm. She's like doesn't want to have any of it. Yeah, and. He he's like she's waste she's wasting these opportunities that have been given to her. So that plus the force vision that was really dark plus the fear plus like just acting in rage and just kind of kind of unloading all of that. Yeah. Um. So I guess Mouse is like Mouse is a little like. It's a little upsetting to hear all of that from, like, somebody who seems to be together most of the time. Right, I think it's a very stark contrast from what you're used to yeah. from Zian. Um, and she's like, well, I mean, whatever Miss Janice does is really up to her, you know, and if she's going to waste her opportunities, that's just how it is. And I mean, as far as, like, all this scary stuff that's happening. I mean, it. I know that it's hard to like go with all of that, but like, we're here, you know, and we're we're here to help. And like, I don't think I would let you like fall to this. Did he? Did he call it like the dark side? Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll explicitly say like light and dark and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't think I would let you all to this dark side you know like we're here to like stop that you know and he'll kind of be like yeah i appreciate that but the the and he'll kind of explain that whole like once you start down it forever it will dominate your path kind of deal uh-huh and kind of I mean like the way, the way I see it everything's a choice and I mean as long as you're choosing to make the right choices like I don't think the dark side really matters that much I mean even if you're doing things out of fear or whatever you're we were you were doing it for your survival and our survival, I would assume. Yeah, and and he'll kind of like nod and just kind of like understand what she's saying, but at the same time, like she doesn't she she doesn't have the same training and same experiences that he does, so mm-hmm. it's kind of like. Yeah, that's that's great for an outsider to say things, but it's different for what he is, you know. But sure. he appreciates the uh, 
the thought. Sure. Yeah. So as that scene kind of comes to a close, I think with like, it probably devolves back into like a little bit of silence after all of that is, yeah. you know, expressed and explained. Um, and I think that uh, we see the captain like coming back up from checking out the damage, um, and he announces to the to the crew that, uh, you know, they can they can get underway at full power. There doesn't appear to be any significant structural damage uh, beyond the two, you know damage pieces where the mandibles were stuck in but it's kind of you know just non-consequential at this point um and he probably like makes a joke because he's the captain of a ship and he can do this kind of thing he's like i as long as we don't run into any storms along our path we should be fine um, why would you say that because <laughs> he's the captain of a ship and that's what he says uh so you all spend the the rest the remaining part of the day um, and you arrive at this small island formation. You can see it in the distance kind of um, after a, about an hour of travel uh, as it steadily begins to grow. And you can tell it's kind of like a, um, there's, there's a large, um, it's like a large mountain almost. And you can see this, the, the buildings and cities are kind of built up in this large mountain. Um, and I think that uh, one of the significant things that you can see is there appears to be like a billowing column of smoke coming out of the uh, the top of this mountain. It's clearly a volcano, right? Um, okay. And the city, because again, all, all land masses are built up with cities, is kind of like surrounding surrounded this. So it almost looks as if the city is like almost permanently on fire uh, with that kind of billowing smoke coming up out of the top of it. Um, and uh, the captain says... All right, crew, we've made it. Aldemina. Bunch of great bars and grog homes here, but we're here for business, not for pleasure. Why did, um, out of character, why did we get on this boat and head this way? Uh, to... There were... Oh, you can... Yeah, no, you're here to, uh, this boat is the transportation for the package you are picking up at Aldemina and bringing back to Avali. You are essentially hired on as guards. Um, okay. Basically. We looked at a job board, and there were like five jobs. Two of them were bounty hunters' jobs for a hut. One of which one of which was investigating a murderer who didn't seem all that bad to some of us. Uh, one of which was acquiring what sounded like a slave. Uh, one of the jobs was to like uh, help a collection agency find a dude, and this like so this job was the best paying and like the mo the least kind of political. Okay. Yeah. So um, as you guys approach the like you you pull up to the dock, um, the uh, the captain says he goes, oh we can expect the package to arrive within oh perhaps the next hour or so. Feel free to stand by for it. I'll need at least one of you to remain here, just in case. But other than that, you're free to explore the island. Jax would ask, does he need someone to stay behind as a guard or to help, like, with loading? Yeah, I think he says he's like, well, I'd, I'd like somebody here when the package arrives. Just in case. We don't want any funny business happening. Um, I can right, help so... with both yeah, Jax would also be like, yeah, you know, I can stick around for a bit. Yeah, essentially he's offering you guys can go explore the island, but if you wanted to, you could just wait the hour, essentially, till the uh, it, everything arrives and it's all good. I guess I'd like to explore. Okay. I think I'll explore as well. And Dash, what about you? Well, the thing is, like, uh, while uh, listening to this, I, I kind of was left out the cantina. No love for that. Uh, but, I don't know, just uh, mostly being glad that he's on land, because the sword on right, the water kind of left a stigma for him. Right, you were you were the only one that, were sea that was seasick, right? Yes. Yeah, right. And you, you've kind of, like, gotten over it, so maybe you're happy... To be on land, so maybe maybe you would go explore with the others, right? It's funny Just, that our pilot is the one who gets seasick. It it was hilarious, yes. Yeah, um, uh, land and sea are two different uh, 
like, you know, regions. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, there's no gravity in space. No gravity in space. <laughs> um... So would you go? Would you go explore with them, Dash, or would you stay behind with uh, with Ken and Jax? Uh, I, I guess maybe explore. Okay. Yeah, just to see what's here. Um. So I want to be near the ship. Yeah. So so Dash and Zian and Mouse, you all head off um, onto the island. You realize very quickly that it's a very industrious place. It's a very industrious city. Um. Lots of you can see lots of warehouses, lots of storage facilities, lots of factories. Um, the accommodations, at least for like living here, appear to be very, very sparse. Um, you know, there's there's large like apartment complexes that are very cramped to hold you know a couple thousand people, um, and there's not a whole lot of like green vegetation per se. Um, it's all very kind of jagged rock. Uh, and it's all, there's, there's a lot of elevation here that doesn't have anything to do with the actual cityscape itself. Um, the roads and sidewalks scale the mountain pretty steeply. Um, you know, even, even to some points, like there's, you're walking along the sidewalk and then the sidewalk becomes stairs to go up and then becomes a sidewalk again. However, the streets, since everything's a speeder, right? There's no like wheeled vehicles. They can kind of be at those weird angles and totally, uh, not have anything, um, too bad. I mean, there there is wheeled vehicles, just not here. Um, so yeah, is getting around on foot is perhaps a bit taxing. Um, but overall, I think that like if you guys work your way through the city, there are quite a few sights to see. Um, it's probably like the one of the only places that you you see a little bit of um, not touristy things, but I think that you definitely see like the opportunity for like. There's probably a couple signs as you're walking around that say, you know, mountain hike this way, um, to like go up and see the the top of the volcano. Um, I think that also you realize that there are a lot of pretty massive like power plants here as you're exploring around that appear to be using geothermal power, obviously because they're sitting on top of the volcano. Um, they they're using some pretty powerful geothermal power. Um, and I think that immediately you recognize as well that they're far too large to just be powering this island. Uh, it's very clear that perhaps there are lines that run to other parts of the planet um, from these massive kind of generators that are using the, yeah. the geothermal power. Yeah, okay. Sounds cool. Um, so I think that as you guys are exploring before we, before we get into maybe perhaps what you guys want to do during your exploration, uh, it's probably a good place to take our break. So, uh, why don't we be back at 10 after? Good? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, see you sounds good. All right, see you. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take a quick little break, chat. I'm glad you all could be here. It's been a lot of fun. And then we will explore Aldamina uh, when we return. Stay tuned. <laughs> 